It is so nice to be here today. You know, I'm a reporter and anchor with ABC2 News, and so often we are out covering all kinds of things over in the city, but it's so nice to be here today to see nice things going on, people doing positive things in the community. And so, you know what, I know we're gonna announce these bombs in just a few minutes, but let's just give them a round of applause. Because we just wanna celebrate them and celebrate everything that they're doing in the community. And you know, so often a lot of people are not thanked for the things that they do. So it's wonderful to be a part of an event like this that takes the time to thank these women for the things that they're doing in their community. And right now, I would like to welcome Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake. Come up and say a few words. Isn't Sheree fantastic? I was so pleased to hear that you accepted the invitation to lend your time and your talent to our effort today. She is so bright and bubbly. I said, you know, only, only somebody with her kind of spirit could be on TV, because they catch me on the wrong day. They were like, what's going on? I'm like, ugh, it's raining. You know, something happened somewhere. Read about it in the paper. That's what. <laughs> So thank you, thank you for being our MC. And I wanna thank everyone who, who has come out this afternoon for Top Neighborhood Moms Luncheon. Isn't this a lovely space to have our lunch and I'm so pleased to be here. I also want to thank my colleagues in government who have been, who have uh, come to share this evening. Uh, Councilman Carl Stokes uh, was here. He had to leave. He has an a, a, a city council hearing uh, that he had to chair. So I wanted to make sure that to acknowledge him and to thank uh, my neighbor and my councilwoman, Councilwoman Sharon Green Middleton, who's always been supportive of this event. Thank you very much. Stand up so people can see you, Sharon. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Pastor Howard, Reverend Howard, for blessing the food and for sharing with us today. Thank you so much for being here. I want to thank our speaker today, Dr. Carla Hayden. I, uh, I was so excited that you accepted the invitation. And I, I always say my goal is every time I see Dr. Hayden to have a new book that I've downloaded for free from the uh, Pratt Library's electronic library, and I'm falling down on my job because I don't have a new book. I'm still listening to the Walter Mosley until my thing runs out in like two days. So not that I'm begging for an extension on my, <laughs> on my book. But I will say, for those of you who have a Blackberry or iPhone or Android phone or Kindle or iPad, you can, you don't have to, I mean, okay, I know these companies need people to buy books, so I'm not trying to take away from that, but you don't have to buy them. You can get them for free from the library. All you need is a library card and a device that you can download. It has to have um, Android, Blackberry, or iPhone. And you can download books for free. You can read them or you can listen to them. And that's what I love to do. I love to listen to uh, the, the books because sometimes, you know, they get these fantastic people with these wonderful voices. And it's like it's listening to a movie. You can see it in your head. And sometimes that's all you need at the end of the day just to hear that calm voice telling. I'd love to hear, I love um, the, the fiction stories, the short stories I've been listening to now. Just something to take you, take you away for a little bit. And I, I so appreciate your leadership and the free service that you provide that I use all the time. So if you haven't done it already, please sign up because it's a fantastic resource that we have. And we have, if not the best, one of the best librarians in the nation. And Dr. Hayden is always looking for ways to be innovative in her leadership uh, and the direction that she's taking the library. So when she, dis when she agreed to be our speaker, I can't tell you how excited I was that she was going to be here to share with you. So I'm all off track. I don't know what I'm supposed to talk about <laughs> today. But I'm, I am. She knows I'm excited about my, um, the free down downloadable books. I'm a walk-in commercial for it. So, 
Uh, as we are here to, to celebrate top neighborhood moms, I just want to talk a little, about, a little bit about what we are doing in uh, the city. As you know, the Census Bureau has uh, estimated that Baltimore grew by more than 1,000 people in the last year. And this is after 60 years of population decline. We in Baltimore are on the upswing, and it doesn't happen without the dedication of people like you. You know, and the thing is, we're not alone in the decline. Uh, so many cities, urban areas have lost population, uh, but we have held it together because of our strong community partners, strong anchors uh, like our cultural institutions, our medical institutions, our institutions of higher learning. You know, all of these things help us hold uh, our city together, but it's also the human capital. It's also the people and the neighborhoods uh, that make Baltimore strong and have helped us uh, be poised for a regrowth. You know, the, it is because people like you decided to stay in Baltimore uh, that we are be able to attract uh, new people to the city. So I want to thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart for all of your hard work. You know, we. Um, when, I, when we decided to honor uh, top neighborhood moms, we know uh, that many of you uh, do not, it's not just for your, your family, but the, the family of your neighborhood and your community, and people notice it. Uh, many of you probably do what you do because it's on your spirit to do it, and don't even think that anybody's even paying attention. But we are here today to celebrate you and to say thank you, that your good deeds do not uh, go unnoticed. Uh, we notice your spirit, your determination, your commitment to your community, and notice that you are setting an example of what it means to be in the community and of the community. So thank you for all of those things. And in order for us to get our city growing, we're going to need more people like you. So I, I'm glad we have some wonderful role models uh, in our community. You know, uh, recently I launched the city's 10-year financial plan. And sometimes people, um, they have asked, you know, why, why did you feel that it was important, you know, to do an assessment of the city's uh, finances and to make, you know, all of these changes? Why all of these changes? Why all of these changes? And I was at an event recently. I spoke on a panel with some other mayors, and someone who was working in Detroit says, you know, what's going on in Detroit? Detroit now with the state takeover and they have a, a, a uh, imposed city manager and they asked the mayors that were on the panel, you know, what did we think of it? And I told them, I said, Detroit motivates me every day, every day, because, you know, I said, I don't know a whole lot about their history. I don't know who was in place when, but when I got that report and it told me that we would have a $750 million deficit in 10 years, I knew that at some point, whether it's Detroit or any other city that's facing uh, bankruptcy across the city, at some point, somebody sitting in the seat that I sit in saw what was coming down the road. And you either choose to do something about it or you don't. And far too often, we get caught up in my business of you know, making sure that it's good for the next four years. So you put a patch here, you put a patch here. You rob Peter to pay Paul because you know you know, you can, get, you, can, you can make it to the end of four years, but that doesn't help us in the long run. And so much of the things that we're called upon, and I know the councilwoman, uh, you know, wishes that she were council person when we were dealing with surpluses instead of deficits, and you get to a point where you're just like, this is, you know, a lot of these problems are not of our making, but they're problems that we face. And, that, and under our watch, we have to decide as elected leaders what we're going to do about it. And I couldn't look at that financial report and not figure out how to do something to change the path of the city. Because when I think about the fact that I, I look at it and I'm like, you know, I didn't create that problem or I didn't do that. So you're here now. You can do something about it. Because when I look in the eyes of the kids when I go to visit the schools and I'm in the kindergarten classes and second grade classes, I know good and well that they didn't cause the problem. But if we don't fix it, it will be theirs to inherit. So that's what the 10-year plan is about. Tough reforms, including changes to pension, benefits, the, the, the city's ta tax structure, vehicle fleet, zoning code, overall municipal operations will have to change in order for us to make the type of investment that we need to make 
for our city to grow. Uh, if we do that, we can close the budget gap. We can allow new uh, neighborhood infrastructure investment, including repairing more roads, improving city facilities, and rebuilding 10 recreation centers, providing funds for a surge of demolition that will tear down more than 4,000 vacant homes across the city, all while reducing property owners' uh, taxes by, homeowners' property taxes by over 20% over the next 10 years. And I wanted to say a little tiny bit more about the demolition work that we're doing. This is tearing down, not but tearing down safe. You know, this is making a new, creating a path uh, for the new Baltimore. You know, so many times people live uh, and work hard, worked hard to pay for their house, and because of things out of their control are living next to a vacant house. And we know some of them can be saved and renovated, but some of them can't. And whose fault is that then? You know, we have to come in, look for the resources, find the resources, work with our good partners in government, and take those down and provide uh, opportunities for investors to come in and create new homes, new places, and breathe new life into our communities. And for those areas where there's no demand, that's where we have our Power and Dirt Initiative. We've turned over 32 acres of vacant land vacant uh, lots and land in the city into community green spaces and gardens. Because we know that a vacant land is not, doesn't have to be an eyesore. It can be an asset when you activate it. So that's what we're about. Uh, and, and every day I am motivated by um, the work of women uh, like the ones that we are honored, honoring here today. I saw it growing up in my community. I was blessed to have so many strong women in the community who, who cared about um, me, not because I was Pete and Nana's daughter, but I was a little girl living in their neighborhood, and that was enough of them. And that's what you do for so many in your community. So I'm so grateful. Uh, everybody has the responsibilities, and you take on extra. You take on yours and everybody else's, too. And because of that, we are a stronger city. So in the, uh, I'm glad that you have a chance to take a break uh, so we can say thank you for all that you've done for your community. Uh, you will receive a, uh, a small token, you have a small gift um, to say thank you for the example that you um, set for others. And I'm so looking forward to uh, Cherie, you sharing the stories of the top neighborhood moms with us. And I also wanna give a special thanks to the Maryland Historical uh, Society for being our host and making tonight's, I mean, today's event memorable. Thank you very much. And last but not least, I know I thank the moms, but I also want to thank your guests today. Thank you for supporting uh, what I believe are the treasures of our city. Thank you so much for being here and all that you do. And I think I'm going to bring Cherie back up. So thank you very much. I'm looking forward to bringing you up and hearing your stories. God bless. And thanks to the Douglas Band again. Absolutely fantastic. That was my dad's high school. You are making him proud and making me proud. Thank you, Mayor, for those wonderful words. And yes, that band, awesome, awesome. All right, and next we would like to call up Mr. Mark Letzer, the Chief Development Officer for the Maryland Historical Society, to offer us a few words here as we're moving right along. Good afternoon. It's really an honor for us to have all of you here, Mayor Raleigh's Blake, the Baltimore Top Neighborhood Moms. This is really an honor for the Maryland Historical Society. So we hope that you really enjoy this day. This is our auditorium. The Maryland Historical Society was founded in 1844. We will be celebrating our 170th birthday next year. And we are Maryland's oldest continuing uh, uh, cultural institution. So that is uh, even more significant that you are here because you're doing community work and that's the kind of work that we're trying to do as well in educating our community on Maryland's long lasting history. I'd like to point out that uh, the house that's on the corner of Monument and Park is the house of Enoch Pratt. And so that is a wonderful link with our great library system. And this was uh, his great philanthropy and his great vision uh, for the state. And it's something that we consider ourselves to be particularly honored by being annexed to. There will be a tour for any of you that are interested when this program ends to see our new 1812 exhibition, which is an award-winning exhibition. I hope that you will join it. And again, thank you to all, and a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Thank you so much for those words. 
And right now, I would like to tell you a little bit about Dr. Carla Hayden. And you can also find her full bio on the back of the program. So I'll just give you a few highlights here. Now, Dr. Carla Hayden is the Chief Executive Officer of the Enoch Pratt Free Library here in Baltimore. Now, prior to coming to Baltimore, Dr. Hayden was the first Deputy Commissioner and Chief Librarian of the Chicago Public Library, an Assistant Professor in the School of Library and Information Science of the University of Pittsburgh and Library Science Services Coordinator at the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago. A graduate of Roosevelt University, Dr. Hayden earned her MA and PhD degrees from the Graduate Library School of the University of Chicago. Please welcome Dr. Hayden. It is such an honor to be here today for um, so many reasons, especially to honor mothers. Because you should know, as soon as I was given this beautiful corsage, the first thing I said was, I'm going to go and take it to my mother right afterwards. She knows I'm here, so she won't be fooled. But also what it means, and I wish she was here to hear those wonderful words from the mayor and also from Sherry, so thank you. You should also know that even though I think the mayor gives the best commercial for ebooks <laughs> in the world, that actually the library buys the ebooks, your tax dollars at work, and that's where we get it, and we get grants and everything, and we're just so um, excited to be able to offer that. Because as you know, sometimes libraries have a kind of stodgy image. Not our library, but you know that when people want to show something being lively or something in a commercial, what's the first thing they do? They show a librarian. And if that librarian chews that gum or has a sip of that soda and goes wild, you want that gum and you want that soda because a librarian went wild. So it helps us to have that. And also Mr. Pratt's house, he used to, he was a very thrifty man. And they tell stories about Mr. Pratt, any Pratt. And he would walk from his office on Charles Street, South Charles Street, and pass the original Pratt Library and check in on everybody and then come home to his house right here. And we have a photograph of him in 1890 something sitting in that library making sure that everybody was doing what they were supposed to do. So this is so fitting to be at the Historical Society because this is also a place that honors people who are making history in Maryland and in the city. And you moms and grandmothers and mothers, and I love what um, Reverend Howard said, mothers by biology or sociology, doesn't matter. Mothers in the neighborhood are making history and continuing on what's so wonderful here. It's wonderful to see the elected officials here. Um, Council Middleton and Carl Stokes, who had to leave, as we know, for the hearing. But he, before he left, he had to say that he has a, a Carla, too. His daughter's named Carla. You may have noticed, though, that despite the image of the librarian, uh, I was attempting to cut a rug to the Frederick Douglass High School Band. Yeah. Now, I don't know. Some of those songs were familiar. And it made me kind of do this. Even our mayor was kind of doing this. And I have to say, Reverend Howard kind of <laughs> gave a little twitch there. Mother's Day is coming, and we are just, this is the great way to start the Mother's Day weekend. And when you think about what mothers do, and you think about uh, one of our favorite books and sayings, it takes a village to raise a child and everyone in that village. And in Hillary Clinton's book, she said, what we are learning around the world is that if women are healthy and educated, their families will flourish. If women are free from violence, their families will flourish. If women have a chance to work and earn as full and equal partners in society, their families will flourish. And when families flourish, communities and nations flourish. Today is also National Teacher Appreciation Day. And all around the country, teachers are being honored. But I'd have to say that we also know that mothers 
are the first teachers. And we should be appreciating and giving appreciation for not only the role of mothers in the neighborhoods, but being the first teachers on this day as well. Now, you may wonder, though, why uh, a librarian was asked to be here. And part of it has to do with the fact that in the libraries, we are in every neighborhood. And we did take the opportunity to put a little commercial with all of our uh, brochures in the back and that. We also know, though, that even though we have all the resources that you can imagine and put them in every neighborhood in the city, we couldn't do what we do without the mothers and the grandmothers in the communities. And you say, well, what, what, are they, what could they do? What do they do? I'll give you an example. And it's really an example of what happens when there's a partnership with government and the community and citizens. We have free programs. And one of the most successful was and is a Spanish story time, Buena Casa, Buena Basa. And the English version is Mother Goose on the Loose. <laughs> and you can imagine what happens in Mother Goose on the Loose quite a bit of toing and froing with the three and four year olds and the mothers. And in the Southeast Library, we had the Buena Casa, Buena Brasa for Spanish speaking uh, families, and we had Mother Goose on the Loose for the English speaking. The mothers who were coming to the separate programs and noticing that one group was speaking Spanish, the other was speaking English, decided while they were waiting on the different programs, that they were going to join together and have a joint program. And this came from them. They, have, they started to bond. They had English speaking and Spanish speaking in the same program. They had baby showers um, for each other. The English speaking mothers hosted a Spanish uh, Thanksgiving dinner for the Spanish speaking families. And out of that grew a program that the library couldn't have come up with by itself. And you're seeing this in every part of the city and in every instance where there's a partnership. And when you think about, and I know you're going to hear more about all of the honorees, there were just a few that I wanted to bring up. Women like Mom Mom, and make sure I say it right, Jose, Groovy, right, there she is. Put your hand up there. Josie. Josie of Morrill Park, who sweeps her sidewalks regularly and volunteers at community events. June Johnson of McCullough Homes. Where are you, June? There you are. Who obtained free computers to open a computer lab in the community. And in Baltimore, that is so significant because 40% of the people in this city don't have access to a computer at home or at school. 40%. And a lady I've known quite a bit and a long time, Attorney Allison Velez Lane of Druid Hill, who mentors young people. And now this one I'm really going to need your help with. Dr. Elizabeth and Pabera, right, of Patterson Park, who volunteers and helps parent support groups. When you think of all this, like Rebecca of Federal Hill, who's devoted to encouraging families to return from the suburbs to the cities, or Ms. Flora, who has lived there, and Ms. Flora lived there for over 80 years? No, 55. 55. I think I just gave a little secret about that 80. <laughs> all right, you're not there yet. And she still gives out food to residents in need. Now, these are just six, and you're going to hear all of the stories. But when you think about what's in this room and the, the willpower and what it takes to do everything that's here and the families that support them, you know that we have a village that is taking care of each other and a place where people are really making sure that this is a city that we can all be proud to be in. When you think about people who will sweep streets, even though there's a, a, a program for that. There are trucks that come, but somebody's going to get out and sweep the streets. Um, there are government organizations, but people are creating government or, uh, organizations. 
There are lots of programs to help children and teens, but in the communities, there are individuals who are doing it. And even organizing bingo and movie nights in the community, that has an impact. And your efforts make a real difference to not only the people right around you, but the people who are watching you. Because you're leaders. Moms are leaders. Moms and grandmothers are leaders. You're the first teachers, but you're also leading not only your family, but the neighborhoods. And so as a librarian, and I can't help but resist, I've got a print book, but it's one of my favorites. And he's got his card, you know It's just that, because all you really need is the pin number. You don't have to even have the card, there's a pin number. This book is about women, and sometimes I go to it just to get inspiration. It's an impulse to soar. Quotations by women on leadership. Because as you know, women, and I think, and I know this is being recorded, and I know that there, I just have to say this, but you know there's a saying, and some of you have heard it, if you want to hear about something, you ask a man. If you want to get it done, you ask a woman. My apologies, Father's Day is coming. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> but really, it's the women who do it. It's the moms who make it and do it. Um, and they're leaders, and it says here, uh, and this is Susan Collins that did so much, leaders are like gardeners. As leaders, we not only are responsible for harvesting our own success, but for cultivating the success for the next generation. The examples that you're showing, not only in your own family, but in the neighborhood, because it is a road. Reverend Howard was talking about um, the journey he's on and how you need patience. And even though you sweep and clean up the street one day, the next day there's going to be more to sweep that day and then the next day. But somebody sees you going out there every morning and sweeping that street and you're waiting them out, and it's the patience, it's the time, it's the effort to put into them. The other is leaders are bridges that connect people to the future. They include others' visions in their own, building alliances and partnerships based on shared aspirations. And it's those partnerships with government, with, with each other, that make the difference. And then when I was feeling really low one time, I got a postcard from Rock, Round Rock, Texas. As I was having a time, you know, this partnership, I was thinking of that and just things, and, and um, just having a hard time uh, thinking. And my mom was still in Chicago, so I couldn't call her up as quickly as I'd like to. And I got a postcard that just said, imagine a woman, imagine a woman who believes it is right and good that she is a woman a woman who honors her experience and tells her stories, who refuses to carry the sins of others within her body and life. Imagine a woman who values the women in her life, a woman who sits in circles of women like we are today, who is reminded of the truth about herself and what and when she forgets. So imagine yourself as this woman, and all of us are today are imagining what it would be like if we had more top neighborhood moms in Baltimore City. Imagine. Thank you, and thank you for what you do. It's time for the recognition of the 2013 Top Mom Winners. All right, so what I'll do is I'll uh, read your little, your bio, and you'll come up, and if we can have the mayor come up as well. And so as I'm reading, you can come up one at a time and, uh, and stand up here. So we will begin with Flora Backwell. She represents the Morrill Park community where she has lived most of her years. She's a former president of the Morrell Park Recreation Council, and she now serves as head of the Senior Center, where she keeps seniors active and gives out food to residents in need. The Morrell Park community says Ms. Flora helps make Baltimore a better place to live, and she's truly appreciated. 
Pamela Brown. Residents of the Ellerslie apartment community say Pamela Brown deserves the honor because she gives of her time and goes out of her way to help any neighbor who needs assistance. She buys them food and snacks, and she also buys household supplies. Oftentimes, some residents can't afford them after paying their rent and prescriptions. Pamela Brown. <laughs> Beth Bullimore. She's not here today, but she has set the standard for block pride and community commitment. That's why the Charles Village Civic Association nominated her. She was CBCA president for four years and stepped up to the task when no one else would. Next, we have Janelle Cusino. She is the very definition of a doer in Mayfield. She's active in the community association, organizes fix-up programs to keep property values up, maintains strong relationships with the city council, writes grants, participates in neighborhood cleanups, compiles the newsletter, handles social media outreach, and she does many other things to numerous to list. Residents say Janelle's efforts to make her neighborhood Baltimore's best have inspired them all. Dr. Ann O. Emery wasn't able to join us today. She's an icon in public education, having taught thousands of students in Baltimore City. This year marks a milestone for her 50 years ago. The Accelerate Program for students entering junior high began at Lamel Junior High under Dr. Emery's leadership. <laughs> Next we have Sarah G. Families in Rosemont Tower, Duklin, and Rosemont have all benefited from Sarah G's commitment to community. Every month she donates household items such as detergent and soap that many take for granted and she gives it to families who can't afford to spend the extra money. Many look forward to what she does and appreciates her gifts. Next we have Josie Grube. She's called Mom Mom Josie, and her wonderful work is why St. Paul's Improvement Association in Morrell Park nominated her. She sweeps the sidewalks and alley, she attends all monthly cop walks, volunteers at community events, and she makes sure there are goodies and food at the meetings. Mom Mom Josie has lived in the community for 60 years, and neighbors say their community is moving forward because of her. Minnie Henderson isn't here today, but Khadija Hart is accepting on her behalf. Minnie has a sense of pride for her Bel Air Edison community where she's lived for 20 years. You'll find Minnie at the block cleanups and community meetings. She's very good at getting young neighbors to also take part in keeping their community clean. Minnie says she wants more homeowners to move back to Bel Air Edison, and she's working every day to make that happen. Minnie Henderson. June Johnson. Neighbors say June Johnson is the backbone of McCullough Homes. She obtained free computers to open a computer lab for residents. She organizes trips for children and families, and she also has coordinated many luncheons, health seminars, and programs. As a delegate for the Resident Advisory Board, she attends all meetings to keep her community on top of important issues that affect them. June had an opportunity to move out of McCullough Homes, but she stayed, saying, if I leave, who's going to be there to help them? Attorney Allison Velez Lane is a spirited and contributing voice in her Druid Hill and her community. She makes sure she's engaged in critical issues that affect her community. Allison is also committed to mentoring young people. She supports young ladies and also a robotics program at Western High School. And Allison volunteers with the program Young Men of Power, which helps young men develop the public speaking skills necessary to navigate our diverse and global communities. Her giving is the exemplary model of what it means to serve the village. She continues to give unselfishly of her gifts and talents to many. German Lavira. For over two decades, she has been providing services to the Hispanic Latino community. What she does to help goes far beyond her duties at this center, which provides health care, social services, and employment opportunities to Hispanics and other immigrants. She helps new residents navigate systems and get settled so they too can become successful and contributing citizens to Baltimore City.
Aloha McCullough. The Lyndhurst Community Association nominated her because of her steadfast qualities and unending work. She's like a mother to many because she helps children with homework, gives them snacks, and she leads them in weekly block cleanups. Neighbors who don't have a car can count on her to take them to the market or doctor's appointments. She attends monthly meetings and gets her dues in on time. Aloha says in touch with elected officials so her community stays informed. Lillian McKenzie has been active in her Hillen community for nearly 20 years. She motivates her neighbors to clean street gutters and sidewalks for the association's beautification project. She helps out at Dumpster Day and the flea market, which raises money for youth activities. Lillian serves on the welcome committee and she attends all community meetings. Lillian is always working with her neighbors to try and keep their area safe and clean. Frida Miss Penny Morton. She takes deep pride in her Homewood Bartlett community and she's highly respected there. Every morning she sweeps her front and other areas. She checks in on neighbors who are sick or shut in and she takes them something to eat and runs errands for them. When a neighbor passes, she goes door to door collecting donations for a block flower or a card to assist the family. Miss Penny has been in the neighborhood for over 45 years and neighbors say she's the kindest and most loving person that they know. Pearl Moulton is unable to be here today, but Adeline Hutchinson is here to accept on her behalf. Ms. Pearl has held several leadership positions on the board for the Robert W. Coleman Community Organization. She spearheaded what is called Quiet Park. She wanted to turn an unsightly area into a useful park for the residents. The idea led to a grant and a finished product her neighborhood association is very proud of. Whether in the boardroom, classroom, ride along with a cop, or on her hands and knees doing community projects, Ms. Pearl is a shining example of a true caretaker of the community. Edith Nelson. Friends of Carroll Park are grateful for all Edith Nelson does. She hosted a walkathon to raise money to fix up the top lot, which had been taken over by trash and drug dealers. Edith worked with city officials, and now the lot is a playground where children are playing once again. For the past six years, she has organized the Christmas Bazaar, and she stays up all night baking all the cookies and cupcakes for the festivities. Dr. Elizabeth Obara Piedra Martel. She is adored in the Patterson Park community because of her dedication to her neighborhood and to the Patterson Park Public Charter School where she works. She has created partnerships connecting over 40 businesses and organizations to families in Southeast Baltimore. Elizabeth volunteers with the Latino Parent Support Group. She was nominated because she empowers so many people in her community to do more and they say they're lucky to have her. <laughs> Sally Preston. The Monument East community is home to Sally Preston and everyone loves her. She coordinates events such as bingo, movie nights, and monthly parties. She visits sick neighbors, gives out birthday cards with money, and she's like a mother to everyone in the building. She goes that extra mile to help her neighbors. They say she deserves the honor because she's always giving to help others. Mirab Rice was nominated for all she does in Westport. She organizes trips to take young people to job fairs, City Hall, and Annapolis so they can see their government at work. She watches from her porch, and if she thinks a young person is with the wrong company, she doesn't hesitate to pull them up or tell their parents. She doesn't turn her back on young people or even adults going down the wrong path. She talks to them and helps them find jobs and resources to do better. Mirab leads by example and encourages citizens to do the same. Annette Ringold. 
She represents New Broadway East. She has consistently opened her home to people in need of clothing and food. She has motivated a group of young men to keep the neighborhood fresh of trash and debris. She calls them her clean dream team. This block captain also gives back by serving as a chaperone on trips and getting school supplies for children. <laughs> Joanne Robinson. For the past 40 years, Joanne Robinson has been a neighborhood advocate in Abel Charles Village. She was always active in school and youth activities ever since her children were young. She's the neighborhood historian and spent many hours doing the research and write-up of the history. Joanne spearheaded the Friends of Eddie's Market campaign to advocate against a new grocery store that would compete against Eddie's. Residents say she embodies what it means to be a productive citizen and a good neighbor. Rebecca Swanston. Rebecca Swanston loves her Federal Hill neighborhood. She has devoted three decades to improving the architecture of Federal Hill. One of her passions is encouraging families to return from the suburbs to live in the city. She leads walking tours to show the value and beauty of the neighborhood. Rebecca also enjoys providing free legal aid to improve women's homeless shelters. <laughs> Betty Bland Thomas. Betty Bland Thomas was nominated by the Sharp Leiden Hall community. She drives the elderly to appointments, encourages young people to keep the neighborhood clean, and to be positive and productive citizens. She also helps them find jobs because she's active with youth works. Residents say B Betty is an asset to the community, and there are not enough words to express their gratitude for all that she does, and they know there's still more to come from Betty. <laughs> Bernice Tucker. Bernice Tucker started a community-based organization 19 years ago after she lost her daughter to HIV and AIDS. She has committed herself to help women and young ladies whose lives have been shattered by crisis and transition. Bernice empowers women to live happier, healthier, longer, and successful lives. She deserves recognition for working effortlessly in the community. And last but certainly not least, Elizabeth Wiseman. President of the Cyber Neighborhood Association is a dedicated servant to the residents in her community. Her monthly meetings are modeled after family kitchen table conversations where you can speak your mind. Elizabeth works closely with city agencies to help address the many needs of her neighborhood and she drives through the community to address residents' concern. Elizabeth Wiseman. Big and folks, those are the 2013 Top Mom winners. Let's give them another round of applause.